Hi and welcome back to Glassboxed, my top 10 tech tips. Uh, today we're going to look through my top 10 tips for beginner would-be web drivers. Uh, we will look through what I think are the top 10 tips to help someone new to web driver get up to speed quickly. So without further ado, let's begin. Number 10. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use existing methods such as WebDriver's wait until methods. Uh, do not try to reinvent something that already exists. Uh, if you're trying to say write a method for some specific function, uh, for instance maybe uh, uh, scroll to a certain point in the page or maybe something even more generic like um, clicking on multiple different things in a particular order, don't try to write that method off your own back look it up there might be some convenient method that actually already exists within WebDriver's API that will save you a lot of time and a lot of grief number nine name your tests appropriately uh, this is almost a no-brainer uh, but make sure to name your tests with meaningful names which mean something towards the success outcome of your test uh, for instance don't name your test anything like test one test two they they really don't mean anything uh, but instead, give your test meaningful names such as uh, should populate contact form or error thrown on invalid form submission. Regardless of what their outcome is or all four of these tests, at the end, if someone were to look at the results, this would mean next to nothing. Uh, whereas this would uh, provide just a little bit more clarity on what the test is actually supposed to do. Number eight, use an abstract test driver. To keep your test clean and concise, try to instantiate your driver outside of a test class. Uh, this helps to serve on two fronts. First, your test class is focused on only the test. And the second, uh, you can better manage uh, your driver somewhere else and it would be easier to manage since its management uh, would be done only in one place. So for instance, we have an abstract class here called the test driver which manages our driver. If we had say multiple different tests all extending this test driver method, uh, test driver class, we only need to change it in one place and this would be uh, effectively inherited down to any of our test classes which are inherited from it. So declare your instance of your test driver in some kind of abstract test class, manage it there in one place and use the magic everywhere else. Number seven, build test suits. The amount of time and effort building test suits will save you is so vast you will laugh yourself silly when you eventually have a collection of suits that you can run at a whim's notice. Uh, as you write tests, the only overhead is that you just make sure to add them to some suit. And when the time to run a number of tests arrives, you can just cherry pick the test suit you want and you can run a number of tests without thinking about it. It's very little overhead compared to the amount of value it can actually provide you in the long run. It will save you time and effort. Number six, use the page object pattern. Using the page object pattern would really help make your tests more clean, readable and easier to maintain. It will stop you from making your tests look very cluttered. Uh, the biggest bonus of writing page objects is that you will write code which you will be able to reuse in other tests. Uh, before you know it, you'll be able to write tests in a matter of minutes using the page objects where it would have taken you much longer uh, had you not. Uh, if you want some more clear-cut uh, examples, just have a quick look at my page objects web driver video. Number five, use unique identifiers in locators. Try to avoid using XBuff or CSS or collections where possible and try to always use unique identifiers when looking for a web element. This is to ensure stronger relationships in mapping your web pages to class web pages and maintaining your test over time. Uh, locators like XBuff and CSS selectors can be brittle. Uh, however, if you, if you manage to find unique IDs, then they aren't as susceptible to change. Hence, your maintainability of your test and confidence that they will be correct over time will be far greater. 
Number four, write your assertions in your tests. Uh, okay, again, uh, another no-brainer. But let me explain what I mean by this. If you use, say, the pattern, uh, the page object pattern, or, or other OOP concepts such as inheritance, make sure you write your tests uh, and your assertions only in your tests. Uh, don't write them, say, uh, in the page object or in abstract test classes. Uh, the reason for this is to uh, A, ensure that if an assertion fails, it is directly related to a test that you have written. Uh, and B, tests which actually fail, fail on expected assertions. So, if you have assertions all over the place, in, in places outside of your tests, uh, let's face it, assertions belong in tests, not, not, in, not in methods uh, that exist somewhere else then you might actually end up looking through a chain of errors if a test eventually fails and you won't even know if it is an assertion that was part of a test that was running or if it was part of another common method somewhere else in your library of classes uh, so yeah write assertions in tests don't write them anywhere else number three write messages with your assertions uh, writing messages with with assertions can be helpful in that when your assertions fail they will provide you m more information than just the assertion error this can be very helpful to someone who isn't entirely clear what the assertion error is or why it was written in the first place as part of the test and having some modified message that was written as part of the assertion just makes that assumption clear what the failure actually is about. Number two, name member variables appropriately. Giving your member variables in your test meaningful names can help identify the purpose of the member variable. For instance, instead of declaring a string with the name of say link, if you were to name it something along the lines of link to home page, it gives it more purpose and it makes it much more clearer to the person who's looking through your test as to the purpose of this member variable, uh, especially to the context of the test. If this principle is followed, then once you've written your test, you can almost read it as if it was written in plain English. Uh, the biggest benefit that is derived from writing member variables with, with meaningful names is that when someone eventually comes to debug your test, if it fails, without having to jump into methods or, or step through methods and th there's a higher probability that in your test you will have many methods uh, which are being called from other chained classes or inherited classes and so on. If you just name your member variables appropriately they'd have no need to do that. They'd be able to at times correctly assume exactly what is expected and just look through the test and debug it that way. It can be a real time saver. Number one, learn the basics and the most common API methods. Okay, probably something that should be exceptionally obvious, uh, but learning the basic API is incredibly important to at least grasping the foundations of using WebDriver properly. Uh, learning things like how to uh, navigate to pages, how to find something on a page, how to close a browser, how to switch to other windows, how to get the title, and so on. This is the backbone of the information you will need if you want to be able to use anything else and this is the reason why I've given this the number one most useful thing to, <laughs> to learn to to be able to write uh, web driver automated tests and that's it for this video folks if you enjoyed my top 10 video then please subscribe and rate if you have any questions or video suggestions then please leave a comment below many thanks for watching until next time ciao Thank you.